Hello friends, Namaskar and welcome to the 25th episode of video series TK Hub. In the previous episode, we have discussed the steps to be taken towards doubling of potato yield. In this episode, we will discuss an initiative by the government of India that is natural farming and try to understand its need, existing status and way forward. It is reported that Shri Subhas Palikarji, an Indian agriculturist, undertook certain on-farm studies applying forest principles involving manures and agroecology for 20 years and termed those farm practices as zero-budget natural farming. Now, it is claimed that millions of farmers in India have rejected chemical pesticides as part of growing movement that favors natural alternatives. On the other hand, with the growing dependence on fertilizers and pesticides, plus ever rising fertilizer subsidy, the government of India during the annual budget 2022 has formally introduced the adoption of a new scheme on natural farming. The major highlights of this scheme are natural farming in areas where chemical farming has not yet reached, especially dryland areas, and fields within a five kilometer corridor along the Ganga River. In those areas, there would be intensive handholding of farmers practicing natural farming with regard to marketing of produce and providing extension services. Government's think tank, that is Niti Ayo, opens that natural farming is a chemical-free alternative to traditional farming methods. Claims are also being made that on successful adoption, natural farming would have several benefits like yield, income, employment, health, environment, etc. Certainly, it will be great to achieve these objectives. We thankfully acknowledge the efforts being made by individual farmers, various groups in different Indian states, and also appreciate the initiative by the government of India. However, most of the agri practitioners are curious about certain facts. What about the fertilizers and pesticides being used in the dryland areas and land along Ganga River? Because they are not at all chemical free. Crops cultivated presently might be containing not only high levels of chemical residues, but are contaminated microbially as river water are not clean. Hardly one crop could be cultivated as lands along Ganga River are prone to floods. How long will it take to reach all the farmers if it is really zero budget? If millions of farmers have already adopted natural farming, then why is there a rise in fertilizer consumption and subsidy? What about the hand-holding of farmers in other schemes already being implemented as lack of marketing facility is the most common challenge of farmers and may also refer to the status of organic farming in India. Most of the agri-practitioners might be aware that shifting cultivation or slash and burn agriculture, also known as chhum kheti, is perhaps the purest form of natural farming. It is believed to have originated during 7000 BC. As per a report on jhum cultivation published by ICR Research Complex for Northeastern Hill Region, Meghalaya, that in the northeastern Indian states comprising of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura, jhum kheti is still practiced in large areas. This region has over 65% of total forest cover as against the national average of 21.34%. And a substantial unutilized groundwater resources. Although the area under Jhum is in decline, it is still very close and even better to that being advocated by practitioners of natural farming. Let us have some fact checking about natural farming. Average paddy yield in India is around 40 quintals per hectare. In Punjab, it is over 64 quintals per hectare. While paddy yield under Jhum Kheti is between 8 to 11 quintals per hectare. In a study sponsored by Ministry of Agriculture Government of India, scientists from Assam Agricultural University reported that in Tripura, the productivity of paddy under Jhum was much lower than that of settled paddy cultivation. Similarly, research by ICR, IIFSR, Modipuram found that under zero budget natural farming in the rice wheat cropping system, the yield declined by up to 40% in initial years as compared to chemical-based integrated crop management. Here it is also relevant to add that 
this purest form of natural farming is blamed as environmentally destructive and a major cause of deforestation. In practical terms, conventional farming and natural farming are two extremes and neither of the two seems to offer a viable option on sustainable basis. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that all the research studies must continue to reply to all the queries and doubts before it is offered to be adopted on a large scale, only on the basis of anticipated benefits. Half-baked solutions will only lead to disaster for Indian agriculture because journey of Indian agriculture has been full of ups and downs. Currently, Indian agriculture ranks second, next only to China. But in value terms, the gap between the two countries is huge. That is, China is five times ahead of India. Despite being number two in agriculture, is it not heartening to note that our farmer practices are not profitable at all? Therefore, the burning issues are increasing farmer suicide, increase in urban migration, declining soil health due to injudicious use of agri inputs producing poor quality farm produce. As a result, more than one third of the world's malnourished children live in India. Malnutrition is responsible for 15% of India's total disease burden. However, before moving towards an extreme option of natural farming and putting our current status as being food secure at risk, is it not the high time to make all possible efforts to achieve nutritional security? There exist tremendous opportunities, provided we could focus mainly to protect the producers, whether farmers or the soil, and our commitment to provide quality safe food in sufficient quantity on a continuous basis to the consumers. And to achieve this, we have certain advantages over China. India has nearly 13% more cultivable land than China. Also, it is unbelievable to know that China had roughly similar GDP with India till 1980, while until 1990, India had a higher GDP per capita. But China fast forwarded to 2018. Therefore, India can also achieve or even exceed, provided we are honestly willing to make it happen. Another hope is India's diverse agroclimatic conditions that may add further wings to our growth in the farm sector economy, that is employment and income generation, including holistic rural development. This is possible not only in primary production, but also in processed food, provided we intend to bring relevant policies, encouraging rural entrepreneurship revolving around agriculture and allied enterprises. To achieve these objectives, we need to have relevant policies on research, extension and operational support. All these things are done even now, but needs a complete overall in a mission mode. Our focus should be on improvement of soil health. Special thrust on integrated input management with an objective to reduce 50% chemicals in the next three to five years. Emphasis and or incentive on reason-specific traditional crops and farmer-centric crop insurance policy. Compulsory increase in irrigated area with emphasis on improved techniques and policy support for rural entrepreneurial network. To make India the nation of our dreams apart from the government, it is also our responsibility that as far as possible, only integrated inputs and practices are adopted in crop products. These steps will not only meet our domestic demand for safe food, but the growing food demand of most of the countries in the world. And this is very much possible. We'll share our views in the coming episode. Jai Hind. Thanks. Like the video and subscribe the channel. Share with friends and give feedback so that we can include new topics for discussions.